Hey, Math 31, I had a question about section 6.6, .6, number 81. And here we were given Newton's law of cooling, and we were given a lot of variables, right? We had your current temperature, your surrounding temperature, your initial temperature, you had the cooling rate, and you had the time that this object was cooling. So there were so many variables. There were five of them. And then on top of that, we had, if I just change this up a bit, we also had an exponent in here, or I should say a power with base E. So it almost looks like there's six variables. But at the end of the day, this question is asking us to solve that formula for little t. So I want to solve for this little guy up here. And just take note, let me change colors here, that this variable, it's in an exponent. So because my variable is in an exponent, that means I'm ultimately going to need to use a logarithm to solve for it. And I'm going to opt for the natural logarithm because the base of this power is e. All right, so the game plan, right? Our game plan always, because my variable is up in an exponent, I want to isolate the exponential term. Isolate, that's not how you spell isolate. Isolate exponential term. And I'm going to use all sorts of algebra to do that. Once I isolate the exponential term, right, then I will log both sides. Then ln, I won't even common log, I'll log both sides and get going there. But that's, that's what I got to do. So if I take a look at this, keeping in mind my eyes on the prize, I want the little t there. The first thing I want to do is move this t sub s to the other side of the equation. And I'm going to do that with subtraction. So that's where you see me getting to this step. I subtracted t sub s from both sides, right? Still eye on the prize. I want little t here. And for me personally, I like to write the variable I'm solving for on the left side of the equation. So what I did in this next step is I took this term from the right side and I wrote it on the left side. And then I took this term, which was on the left side of the equation, and I wrote it on the right side of the equation. All right, so that's where that's coming from. But still, again, I on the prize, I want to solve for little t up here. All right, so then the next thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and divide by t sub 0 minus t sub s. And let me, let me talk about why. This, this term right here, this ugly looking term, it's uggo. I'm not going to deny that, but it's ultimately being multiplied to my exponential term. So if I want to get rid of it, I'm going to divide both sides by t sub 0 minus t sub s. Again, it's ugly, but that's what I would do, and that would cancel out. That's why you see me getting to this equation, right? And now I have isolated my exponential term. Yes, I've got something ugly here, but I've, it's, still, it's still isolated. So it's at this point I'm going to take the natural log of both sides of that equation. And through properties of logs, we talked about how ln's and e's cancel, and the only thing that survives is that exponent. So that's where you see me getting to this equation, right? And then, again, I want to keep my eye on the prize. I want to solve for t here. So what do I need to do? Well, t is getting multiplied by this negative k, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative k. The negative k's will cancel out, and then I will have isolated my t variable. So I'm just going to circle this. So I've isolated my t variable, and that's, that's all fine and good. The only reason I'm going to continue with this problem is because the direction said, go ahead and get a single logarithm out of this. And you could make the argument here that this already is a single logarithm, but I'm going to go a step further. Or actually, I'm going to go a couple of steps further. So when you divide by a number that's like multiplying by its reciprocal, which is why you see negative 1 over k being multiplied to that logarithmic term. But the thing here is we've learned about the power property for logarithms, so I can move that constant up top as that exponent. And this equation here, that is the cleanest form of, of solving for t. So that's why you see this solution here. I've solved for t, and it's a single logarithm. All right, so that's section 6.6, .6, number 81. Thanks so much, gang. Bye.